So this is a video that you could say has been a long-awaited thing for a few people. It started because two years ago I made a YouTube video of a homemade antenna that I built for the CB band. It got pretty popular and people requested me to do a video on how to make one. I'd been interested in making a tutorial video since the beginning, but I never did it because then winter came and I needed to work outside so I didn't bother doing that in the cold. So then finally, after winter 2009, uh, in summer 2010, I got lazy and distracted. And then in the fall of 2010, I finally started working on the video and the antenna. Uh, so it was almost finished, and I left it out here in my yard one night, and somebody randomly decided that they needed a homemade CB antenna more than I did. And they took it. So then I got very frustrated. I don't know why you would want to steal somebody's homemade CB antenna from their yard. It's just a dollar fifty of PVC pipe and some strands of copper wire. So I didn't bother starting all over again. And then winter 2010 came and that was cancelled again. So here we are in the crazy part of my yard and this is where the original 2009 antenna lies. I took it down from the tree meaning to disassemble it but I never did it. Fast forward to spring 2011 and I'm finally making this video. So sorry for making you guys who requested it wait so long. Uh, but here it is finally. And I hope you enjoy it. Man, whose cats are these? First thing you'll need is a half inch PVC pipe at least 104 inches long. And you'll also use two end caps for your PVC pipe. I use the non-threaded type. You'll need copper wire. This is 12 gauge solid copper wire. Um, solid copper wire is harder to work with. It's, easy, it's, it's harder to measure out and it gets kinks in it and everything. Uh, but it's easier to solder with when you're using a thick gauge like this. Now stranded thick gauge wire um, is easier to work with, cut and measure, but it's harder to uh, solder to. If you're using thinner wire, that really shouldn't be a problem, but this is the gauge that I would recommend. You'll also need some rope. Exactly how much you'll need, uh, I'll talk about later. Okay, so now we need to talk about the connectors that you'll be using. Uh, sorry for my workbench, it's messy as usual. Uh, so basically you have three options. Your first option, which would be my most recommended option, would be to get a fem female uh, connector like this, but with a female end, also known as a uh, pigtail connector. Uh, and that would be the easiest to install and the most practical overall. All you need to do is strip one end and solder into the antenna. Second option, which would be my second most recommended option, would be to use a three foot jumper like this and cut off one end and put a barrel adapter on one end to make it into a female connection. Third option, which would be not my, my uh, not so recommended option, would be to just take out the connector like I did here out of an old radio. This is the option I'll be using today. Uh, I don't recommend it because uh, it, it leave, unless you figure out how to um, contain this, it, it'll uh, leave your connections exposed. Uh, so I don't recommend this one, but I'll be using it because I, I just want this one tempor temporarily until I find a female pig connector, pigtail connector. Now you need to measure out a 102 inch piece of wire. This is 12 gauge wire. This is gonna be your driven, driven element. You can use some thinner or thicker wire. Uh, this is just my preferred gauge. Now you do the same thing and cut four different strands, each 103 inches long. These are gonna be your radials. Here is the half inch PVC pipe like the one you'll need. Uh, they sell these at Home Depot and they cost just about a about dollar and 50 cents. They're really cheap uh, and easy to work with. Okay, now the first thing you want to do to this pipe is measure out roughly 104 inches, mark the line, and then cut. 
Now in one of your end caps, you're going to drill a hole for your coax to run through, as well as four holes for your radials to run through. Make sure to use drill bits the same size as the wire that you're using, or approximately the same size. This way, the, uh, there, there isn't going to be a gap between the wire and the hole. Okay, there is the job done, and you can see that the coax runs cleanly right through it. Now as for your radials, the holes, I would recommend making them right here on this edge. Don't make them here because it might uh, get in the way uh, when you fit this onto your PVC pipe. And that's sort of what you should be looking for there. Center one is for the coax, outer ones are for the radials. Next you just run the uh, radial wires through the cap and strip the ends. Now when you solder this, you want to solder it in pairs of two. Now for your coax, you want to run it through your cap and then strip about one and a half inches from the top and then pull your shield braid into two parts and twist that into a just a thin wire like this and then this is going to go uh, soldered onto uh, each, each of these ends is going to go into one pair of the radial connections that you soldered okay there is my coax shield soldered to my radial wires I'll be the first to admit this isn't the prettiest job ever. Uh, regardless, it, it, it looks ugly, but it's actually a good solder joint, so it'll work. doesn't look pretty, but it'll work. Uh, so now next we wrap this up, and we are going to strip the uh, middle part of the middle conductor of the uh, coax. Okay, there it is wrapped up, and with the center conductor stripped, I would have rather used uh, heat shrink on this part here because I really hate the look of electrical tape. Uh, but uh, as you can see this is a, pretty, a pretty large joint and I don't have anything that large uh, as far as heat shrink goes so I just had to go with the electrical tape it's fine it's just that it doesn't look nice uh, so next we solder our center conductor to the first piece of wire that we made which is going to be our driven element there is the completed solder joint and the next step is to slip that assembly into your PVC pipe, your center conductor going first of course uh, and this is why we cut this to 104 inches because we need a little bit of extra space for this part here so now we'll gently slip this into there and be done with that part lastly install your other end cap at the other end of the pipe there is a sealed antenna with the soldered connector and there is my completed and mounted antenna. Of course, your next step would be to figure out how you're gonna pair it up to a mast. I used hose clamps. Right now I only have one hose clamp on there, uh, but I'll be adding another one shortly. Um, I added a couple PVC pipes in there just to take up the slack because that hose clamp was a little bit too big. But once you've done that, of course you have to figure out where you're gonna mount it and how high you're gonna mount it. Mine is obviously not very high up and I don't really need it to be very high up. I've got my other antenna up there mounted high up. But this is just my backup so this is good enough. After that you need to extend your radials at roughly 45 degrees downward. It doesn't have to be exactly 45 degrees. As long as you're around that neighborhood you might need to adjust. Uh, calculate how much height you're going to have so you can couple your radials up to some ropes so that you can hold them outwards let me show you what I mean and here's another shot of the antenna you can see the four radials extended evenly around the antenna you can see that the, connect the connector is exposed and this is why I recommended using a female pigtail connector or a modified three foot jumper because those usually, usually have some kind of protection again the radials roughly 45 degrees downwards and you need to figure out how high your antenna is going to be going uh, so you can figure out how long to make these ropes here which have the job of holding your radials outwards here I made these insulators from PVC pipe they're not vital uh, especially if you use insulated wire but they uh, really help for mechanical uh, support to copy your wire to your rope now let's demonstrate this thing on the meter okay here's the setup this antenna is going to be used with so let's check that SWR. First let's make sure this is calibrated. You can see that's calibrated right there. Now let's check on that SWR. And look at that. 
That's that's great right there. That's wonderful. Break a one nine for a radio check. Can I get a radio check, please? Yeah, thank you, driver. There we go. Reception is great too, but right now there's nobody on. It's just a bunch of noise. Yeah, there's nobody around the band right now. I couldn't give a better de demonstration of the transmitting ability right now because there's really nobody on the band. Uh, later, I'll up upload a second video. Uh, when I'm talking to my locals around here. Uh, but yeah, that's basically your uh, homemade antenna right there. Uh, you can see it works great, uh, transmits great, low SWR. Uh, great little backup antenna, field day antenna, or just a fun project to build. Maybe you can't get a commercial antenna, can't mount one, whatever. Uh, it's a great little thing to make, you know. Um, so hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any of them. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.